Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another Knowledge Nugget. This week we're going to take a quick look and hopefully get you inquisitive enough to do some research on your own about Layer 2 of the OSI model. So let's hop into it. Okay, so Layer 2 of the OSI model is called the Data Link Layer. And if you remember last week, we covered the physical layer. So your cable, your cables, your wireless uh, RF transmission, the physical bits, network adapters, things like that. This week is the data link layer. And the data link layer supports the layers below and above it. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. Like I said, last week, layer one was the physical. This is layer two data link. And so what the data link layer does, and I don't know if you like my drawings here, but one of the things it does is it provides delivery between devices on a switch. So, and it does that with frames. So when you think about packets and TCP IP and things like that, that's a whole other layer. So at the data link layer, we're dealing with we're dealing with frames okay and those are Ethernet frames what I'm talking about is Ethernet frames there are other types of frames that could happen at this level I don't know if you know what a token ring is but you know you could have a you know data link with token ring we're not going to cover that I don't know anybody who's still running it. I'm sure there's some sort of archaic install out there. But uh, the frames are going to communicate, and it deals with either the same you know, communication between two devices on the same switch, or you can see we've got these switches linked together. And you don't see a router here, so this is just a layer 2 connection. So it would also handle the communication you know, between two ports at the Ethernet level between these two switches. And so it deals with that. It does it via frames and the Ethernet protocol. And it also uses um, uh, the unit that you're going to hear used frequently with Layer 2 is um, the PDU, but that is uh, a protocol data unit. And in Layer 2, that is your frame. Something else that you're probably familiar with that operates at the data link layer is your MAC address. And so MAC address filtering, and there's a whole MAC sublayer for data link, for the data link layer. So go out and look that up. I think you'll find that interesting. But your MAC address, your physical or your burned in address, those are all the same thing. MAC, physical, burned in, all the same thing are all here at this level. Um, and like, like I said, it supports the layer below it and above it. And when it comes to this next layer and information coming down, it takes whatever PDU is coming from this layer. And we'll get to that next, next week. But when that PDU comes down, we encapsulate it in an ethernet frame. And then we go down the physical, and if you can imagine an Ethernet cable, you know, and then you've got over here, whatever other device is listening to these layers. So um, it, would, it would work its way this way and this way. So there's some encapsulation that happens, you know, between those, those layers. Couple other things that happen in the data link layer. Um, we have collision detection. So if there is a collision on any of these ports or between these switches, we have that. We also have the mechanisms for dealing with collisions. So go out and look that up. I think you'll um, find that information useful. And you will also understand why we use switches instead of, of um, hubs. Hubs are basically a layer one device because every port gets every 
uh, frame every packet and switches actually narrow that down so it's a very narrow very specified communication it's it's much better it, we reduce those those collisions greatly uh, so the MAC address filtering back to this happens here spanning tree lives here some QoS lives at layer 2 and this may be the most shocking of all because when we talk about it and sometimes you'll hear me say a uh, layer 3 VLAN or a layer 2 VLAN well VLANs are just another um, LAN they're just you know virtual so they actually live here so the VLAN itself is layer two but then when we start routing between them and you get that that next layer interface that's where the layer three comes in but vlans do live at layer two so then real quick we'll talk about some of the protocols that live here you have cdp which is cisco discovery protocol of course, Ethernet has to live here. That's the standard that runs the data link layer. Very important. Go out and look this guy up. I'm also going to highlight this because VLANs do live at layer two. Um, if any of you have any, I used to deploy wide area networks, and I'm not talking just like one link, but I'm talking hundreds of links now. I'm sure I haven't deployed some of the largest networks in the country, but I have deployed some large networks, and a lot of them were done over frame relay. And that happens here, and it's an old uh, packet switched uh, method of putting a WAN together. So frame relay lives here. LLDP, which is the link layer discovery protocol. So this, something something else to note is that LLDP is the standard where devices can see each other and share a little bit of information hey I'm this device you're connected to this interface and CDP is Cisco's proprietary discovery protocol but I will tell you I have seen some devices talk this and I don't know I don't know if uh, the trademark or the patent or whatever is up on that and so people are just like yeah we'll show Cisco I don't know if that's the case but I do find it hilarious when I uh, log into some manufacturer's devices and they're actually doing CDP like I said I don't know all the legal ins and outs maybe it's a standard out there now too but um, I would more than likely use LLDP <clears throat> MPLS which is the new craze when you've got sites all over the country you hook into a provider's MPLS network, you get your AS number, your routing over BGP, all that good stuff. That happens at layer two. It is akin to frame relay, uh, has basically replaced frame relay. I'm sure there are still frame relay networks out there, but this uh, MPLS is the new kid on the block. And there are a lot of advantages to MPLS. You have PPP that lives here, which is that point-to-point -point protocol. And then SLIP. And while we can use these, and SLIP is actually depreciated. We'll just put an X there. We don't use it anymore. Uh, PPP and SLIP, you've probably seen those from your dial-up days. But PPP can actually still be used in modern networks. And the iteration of that that you probably see is PPP OE, so PPP over Ethernet, very popular in DSL world. So you have to provide a username and password uh, to get authenticated to the network and get an IP address. Like I said, there are more sublayers to this layer. This is layer two in a nutshell. Go out and research this, take a look at it. I hope it uh, helps you. After we put this all together, we're going to talk about troubleshooting more because there is layer two troubleshooting. So once we've built our model, 
all the way up over here, we will talk about troubleshooting because that's very important. A large part of the OSI model and having that knowledge will help you troubleshoot effectively and quickly. So I hope this uh, video has been informative. As always, down in the link, I want to uh, down in the description. I want to thank everybody for uh, sending donations. People that send those, I appreciate it. Some people send me hardware. Um, some people uh, ask me to do some consulting, and I'm always happy to speak with everyone. I do try to respond to everyone's email. I've got a lot of very cool videos coming up here um, in the next week. Like I said, there's going to have to be some out of bound. Out of, or out, out of uh, sequence videos. I will keep the staples, but I'm going to slide some in between. So in the meantime, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And we'll see you tomorrow for Security Saturday.